Hi, I'm Tony Van Veen, CEO of Dismakers. Happy Independence Day. Today I want to talk to you about why it's so much greater to be an independent artist than you give it credit for. And I want to talk to you about the reasons it's actually better to be an independent artist than to be signed to a label in many cases. I've been selling CDs for a long time now, but a few decades ago, I was an independent artist like you. Back in the day when I was playing in bands, I always dreamt of being signed to a label. And I know that that is the dream of many or maybe most independent artists out there today. Maybe it's your goal to get signed one day. And I see it. I, I get it. It's, it sounds so great. You're thinking, the label, they'll invest in me. I'll get an advance. They'll pay for my recording. They'll do the marketing for me. They'll do my graphics, my video. They have a whole team. They will get my product in stores. They will accelerate the growth of my fan base and my streams and my sales. And all I'll have to do is worry about making great music. Sounds amazing, right? Except that's not how it works in real life. Now, don't misunderstand me. I don't mean to hate on record labels. They perform a really important role in the music industry today and have for decades. But for you as an artist, there are many reasons why it's actually preferable, better to be independent. Let me address those reasons. And then I'll address a couple of reasons it might be good to be on a label so that you can compare for yourself. So why is it better to be an independent artist? One big reason is you're in control. You decide exactly what music to make. Your sound, the length of your songs even, the number of songs on your album, your genre, everything. You decide the look of your art, your album cover, how your YouTube videos look, your social channels, your merch items that you sell, and the merch designs. Heck, even how you look on stage. You decide the timeline, what you want to do when. When do you tour, record? compose. Basically, you get to drive as hard or as mellow as you want. So clearly, that full control that you have is a biggie. You just won't have that with a label. The second reason it's preferable to be independent is that you're in charge. You make the decisions, period. What to spend, where to go, when to work. You set the priorities. You're in charge of the money. You keep the books, you pay the bills. Not fun, but really important. You decide what to spend on, how much for marketing, for videos, for instruments, recording, and when to spend your money. You can control your own expenses, which you can't really do on a label. You hire and fire managers, switching bandmates, choosing who you work with, no label to tell you who to work with. And perhaps most importantly, you own all your rights, both your compositions and your sound recordings, which can drive long-term royalty income. And the third huge reason why it's better to be an independent artist is you get to collect all the money. Every distribution dollar, publishing dollar, YouTube dollar, merch dollar, performance dollar comes to you. There's no label to take 80% or more of your royalties or to rope you into a 360 deal that in addition to taking the bulk of your royalties also allows them to take monies off merch sales and concerts that you've set up. Now, today there are a few new breed labels who will work on a fairer revenue split with the artists like 50-50 or sometimes even a bit more favorable. But most labels take the bulk of your royalties. When you hear an artist like Peter Frampton say that he got paid $1,700 for 55 million streams of Baby I Love Your Way, that's not what Spotify paid for those streams. Spotify paid over 150,000 for those 55 million streams, but the label kept the vast majority of those royalties. So if the label keeps most of your royalties, what are the advantages of being on a label? Well, they're your bank, or perhaps more accurately, they are your seed capital. They pay initial expenses, recording, manufacturing, promo videos, a big deal for poor independent artists. They may even pay you in advance, but don't be fooled, it's not a payment. It's basically a loan. You are ultimately the one paying for it and you have to pay it back. The label may front you, 
20 grand for recording, but they will deduct it from the royalties you're supposed to get paid. In fact, they'll deduct it from the 20% of the royalties that you will get as part of your label contract, which will take a long time to recoup. Another reason labels are helpful is they have experience, expertise, and they do some of the work. Labels have lawyers and marketers and connections to distribution. They'll do a bunch of that work if, as an artist, you get their attention. If they decide you're worth putting resources into, which is kind of ironic because they sometimes choose not to do that, even though you're signed to their label. Now, you're thinking, yes, but the label will do promo and push my music. And again, if they've decided you're worth pushing, they indeed would do this. And not to bash on labels, but I've heard from many artists that they were spending more on marketing themselves when they were independent than the label did after they were signed. And that really cost the artist, not just in terms of lost career momentum, but also in a much smaller royalty stream because the label took a good chunk of it. And then there were those cases where I've heard of where the artist label actually held up their album, sometimes for months, for any of a number of reasons. They may not have thought the songs were good enough or appropriate, or it didn't work in their label release schedule, or it was the victim of internal label politics, or the person at the label who was the artist's main advocate, like the A&R rep, got fired or left. Talk about killing your momentum. There are many reasons why a label could hold up a release, and as an independent artist, you are in full control of your release cycle. Now, clearly, I don't need to tell you, being an independent artist is a lot of work. You have to do every single thing yourself, and that's one reason why it's such an appealing idea to get signed to a label. And I get it. The grind of being an independent artist, that grind can become overwhelming. And when you're in the middle of the frustration of trying to get a few gigs booked, that frustration can lead you to really underappreciate or maybe completely miss what the advantages are of being independent. So what actually is my point here? As independent artists, we are all at times prone to thinking the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. There are certainly advantages to being on the label, but these advantages are frequently glorified in the artist's mind to an unrealistic extent. Yes, being independent is hard work, and frequently it's hard work that you're doing after your day job, which makes it very hard, plus balancing your family obligations and other obligations. But as I hope you realize now, being independent has many advantages compared to being on a label. Being an artist is not for the faint of heart. It's not for everyone, but let's be honest. What would your life be like if you didn't have your music? So often, creating music is something that calls us, that drives us, that we're maybe not even in, entirely in control of. And so when the grind gets you down, take a deep breath, and find a way to enjoy the greenness of the grass on your side of the fence. It ain't so bad being an independent artist. In fact, it's pretty damn great. If you're fortunate enough to be an artist, you're fortunate, you know you're writing, you're recording, you're performing. Most people in the world have no sense of what that feels like. But you do. Happy Independence Day.